The High Performance Canada Series is brought to you by 475 High Performance Building Supply. This series is also brought to you by Inotech Windows and Doors. On the Build Show today, we're in this residential development just a little bit north of Kelowna, British Columbia. We're checking out this place. It really does stand out in the surroundings in this development area. It's a really unique house in terms of its methods and materials. Um, this project actually sits at step five on the step code, which is just a little bit below passive house standards. The owner of this project is actually the builder and he has a really unique perspective on the industry. So we're gonna go have a look around and go talk to him. Let's get going. So we're here with owner builder, Layton. Layton, you are a, uh, you have a unique perspective. You work for a, a municipality as a building inspector. And uh, so you've seen a lot, that's for sure. Yeah. So you must be super proud of your house. Talk to us about your, your overall vision for this place and what you've done in terms of just over big picture of building materials here. I wanted to go beyond minimum code. Um, yeah. You know, I have discussions with other builders about how difficult it is to hit the current, um, in my municipality where the current air tightness is 3.5. Um, okay. I thought it would, this would be a good opportunity for me to, to actually do it for myself and mm -hmm. see where I end up. You're building this place to step five, which is you know, almost a decade ahead of the game. So, so what are your major approaches here with materials to, to hit that step five? It's an ICF first floor. Okay. It's a walk out on this side, but on the back, most of it is buried, more of a, more of a basement. Mm -hmm. um, I've removed a lot of the thermal bridging. Uh, my floor, I've, I used a new Jura product. They have a detail where you use a structural LVL top plate and then hang the eye joists below. So you're not looking to do air tightness around box ends or insulation around box ends of so, your floor so system. So no major floor as a thermal bridge? Yeah, Great. you know, the plate is still a thermal bridge, but um, it's, it's fairly minor. Yeah. Um, but it's, the benefit is in the air sealing mm -hmm. and not having to air seal Mm -hmm. box ends and that kind of thing. So the su supplier, West Eco, basically worked on this uh, package with you in, I'm sure, three, some 3D modeling software. Right? Yeah, it's all SIPS panels. Um, SIPS walls, SIPS roof. It's just mm -hmm. uh, basically pretty much built the world's biggest beer cooler. The other major point is I put the best windows I could afford in. Yep. There you um, go. Massive triple glazed windows. Yeah, Inotech. they're, they're, they're tri Inotech triple glazed, um, super airtight. And um, yeah. talking of airtightness, I had my um, mid construction blower door test this right. morning. Okay. Do you know how you did? I, I do know how we did. Uh, so we found a few holes and stuff for me to. I think I can do better, but uh, the first one was uh, 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's amazing. So over the years, you must have you've you've uh, you've figured out the repertoire of products that you like seeing on job sites. Right? Um, yeah. And are you applying that here? Is this is this kind of your all your ideal uh, ideal situations you've cooked up in your head over the years of being a building inspector? Yeah, it pretty much is. Um, yeah. I, yeah. There's lots of products I like here. Lots of products I'm used to. You can see, kind of see from the roof system. The panels on that side. Uh, uh, run full length from the top to the bottom. That's uh, that's the maximum length that the manufacturer can produce. That's okay. uh, 24 feet. 24 foot long. Um, because the span is 24 feet from the center bearing, the engineer wasn't happy with a two by 12. Okay. He wanted to beef it up. Okay. So we have a, a 11 7 8 LVL between each panel as the spl panel splines. Okay. On this side is much more kind of conventional. Mm -hmm. Where so they're running lengthwise on the building. They're running lengthwise. There's two glue lamb beams between the kind of the three bays of the building. Okay. And then the splines are just conventional two by twelves. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So different uh, directions for them. Different directions. Yeah. Um, and then you're going to frame a service cavity on the interior side. Service cavity on the yeah. in interior. Just yeah. I don't want any. Trying to keep that really tight air tightness. So we're downstairs in the lower level of your home now, and I, I love how much natural light we're getting down here, despite being subgrade. And you did your window walls really great. I love how you guys, you you know, did them completely separate from the from the main structure of the home, right? You have the IC, the ICF. The ICF's continuous. Continuous. Um, yeah, and the window wells don't go down to the same depth. Okay. Yeah, we backfilled halfway, and then the the 
the window wells went on mm -hmm. afterwards. And they're, they're not even pinned back to the wall at all, this zero thermal bridge there. Okay, they're just floating there. They're just floating. They're yeah. uh, reinforced and then um, once they're backfilled there. Yeah. That will just push them up against the side of the house. Yeah, so. exactly. So the interesting part for me about you know these kinds of materials that you're using for the structure in terms of the SIPs and the ICF is like how many options you do have to air seal to it. Yeah, it's lots of compatibility between different uh, manufacturers' products. Mm -hmm. um, I think w pretty much as with anything, the key is um, to follow the manufacturer's instructions. Yeah. Um, you know, one of my pet peeves as a building inspector is when people cork joints um, because nobody reads the instructions on a tube of cork. Everyone knows how to use it. So, yeah. But most tubes of cork will say the bead of cork has to be as deep as it is wide. Yeah. And then it'll have a minimum, a minimum width. Mm -hmm. But people have a tiny little gap between two pieces of trim and just wipe cork on the surface and be surprised when it cracks in And three, three points of contact. Yeah, you know, all those things. But everyone control. knows how to use cork, so yeah. nobody would ever read the instructions. That's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. And you're right about material compatibility too. It's something that's so important. Yeah. You know, we have so many options for building materials now, and compatibility just needs to be looked at, right? Yeah. To make always. sure that this tape sticks to this foam or, or whatever These it is. These products work together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, always good if you can stick to one manufacturer's system. Mm -hmm. Um. But you may not, you know, that may not be necessary. You can, yeah, and not always an option, maybe. And not always an option if you're trying to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. So another interesting product here we have is uh, distributed by 475. It's a Proclima product. Um, it's called Viscon. It's basically a sausage tube caulking. But what they've done, and this is something I asked uh, Sean from 475 for uh, about a year ago. I said, Sean, do you have any kind of spray applicator guns um, for the Viscon product? Basically, it's a liquid applied membrane and you're able to use it in a lot of tricky situations. If you do get into situations where you have a difficult air sealing location, such as box ends, if we ever happen to need to air seal this detail up here, it's gonna be extremely difficult with tape. So it's always good to have something in your repertoire like a liquid applied membrane. Being able to spray that with, an air, with compressed air is fantastic. Other thing they've thought about is different gap sizes, right? So there is this um, this regular Viscon. It's up to an eighth of an inch gap that you can um, that you can seal with it. There's also one with fibers in it that spreads a bit of bit of a bigger gap, up to three quarters of an inch. So a great versatility here in terms of just having another tool on your job site for air sealing. So we're upstairs now. You can really see uh, the volume of the uh, of the SIP construction. This must have gone up pretty quick. It did go up quick took about four weeks okay. with two people. Two people, yeah. <laughs> That's, That's so the there thing. You yeah, yeah. If, you, if you had a full crew, um, it, obviously it would be even quicker. We um, did the walls on this side, mm -hmm. and then I framed this center wall. Mm -hmm. And then we had uh, lots of friends and family come on a Saturday when the crane was here, and we lifted that whole roof section. Mm -hmm. And then I spent a couple of weeks um, putting the rest of the walls on this side, um, building the cloistry wall um, and having everything ready. And then we did the same thing again. We had okay. all the friends and family in the crane and then we lifted uh, the two beams and the rest of this rest of this side. That's great, like, a, like an old place. school barn raising kind it of ceremony. It was a little bit like an old school barn raising. What kind of R values are you projecting here in terms of uh, you know, f basement slab, fl uh, walls and roof? Um, so the basement slab is about an R15 or 16. Okay. Uh, the roof is R50. Uh, the walls up here are about an R40, and the walls downstairs are just a little bit lower than that. Yeah. Um, okay. But a lot of them are, are, are backfilled. I, I think they're about an R36 or so okay. downstairs. So you're really covered. You know, it's not the most architecturally advanced or interesting house but I've with with the with the design with this being a completely open space and actually you know obviously the, I've put walls up but mm -hmm. the other side of the main cent central wall is completely structure free um, yeah so you have, no, you have no interior load bearing walls except for this just, one just the one down the center yeah. Yeah. Um, you know I've invested in my envelope 
Uh, if I want to remodel any of the space in the future, uh, I can move walls without any structural changes, out, without puncturing the envelope. Mm -hmm. And it's the same downstairs. So if I want to move, mm -hmm. move walls, change the configuration, you know, add a secondary suite or mm -hmm. anything like that, it's, it's, it's really, really approachable, really possible. Yeah, amazing house. Beautiful setting, so thanks so much for showing us around today. Yeah, you're very welcome. You know, I'm really so happy we came and checked this project today. Layton, as an owner builder and a building inspector, has such a unique perspective. He's been able to really design this home in his head over years of being a building inspector, you know, seeing what other builders do and don't do, and he's able to execute a really smart and robust system here and pull off a step five home. So thanks to Layton for showing us around today and thank you guys for tuning in. See you guys on the next one.